back. And I think uh, this is something which is very close to my heart, Joa, and we're trying to encourage this amongst our academic, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, uh, colleagues as well. Uh, we talked about to inform teaching, uh, and then thirdly, to build reputation. One of these days, you know, most of you in this room will probably be quoted for some of the great work that you did, some of the criminal, you know, magic you know, uh, cases that you, you've solved or whatever, inshallah. <coughs> so, just kind of to sum up uh, uh, the benefits of research to a university. Uh, you know, if, if you have a very successful research, and, and you know, even if a research that didn't go the way you wanted it to go could be considered as a successful research because, you know, a lot of discovery uh, are found, you know, by accident, okay? Uh, so, so, I think if we have successful research, this means we have more and better quality of students if we're known for that, okay? We're going to have more students, not just locally, but also internationally. At the moment, UBD is working very hard to increase our opinion percentage of and all international students coming to us. At the moment, we're running less than 3%, uh, and it's very sad, really. Uh, we want to increase that. Why? Because we want this uh, very rich you know, um, uh, integration of locals and international students, huh? uh, so that you, know, you don't have to travel far, we'll bring people over. Uh, and of course, there is the economic issues as well, because if you bring international students, you bring money to university. Um, and then uh, it will increase ability to attract and retain highly qualified and motivated faculty members. Very important. Uh, this is always a challenge for every university to, to not only retain but to attract really good people. Money is one thing, okay, salary. Uh, and, and you'll find out later on that we're working very hard, all three universities working very hard at the moment to have a, a salary review for the academic staff. But the, the other thing, of course, is the support for research, the support for teaching and learning. Those are really important issues as well. Uh, and, of course, the, the living environment. Brunei is fantastic, okay? It's a fantastic country to be in uh, because it's safe, it's stable, you know. Uh, I don't think it's boring. I think it's, it's, it, it's quite vibrant. It depends on how you, 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 you look at it, how you make, make out of it, you know. I've been away from Brunei before returning for 17 years. And before returning, I was offered two consultant positions. And if I was to stay on, uh, that was back in 1999, I would think I would have a very thriving private practice. Uh, I think all my kids would be going to uh, this very posh uh, public schools. And, uh, and you know, we'll be, we'll be doing all sorts of nice and fancy things of a smart group. But the thing is, at the end of the day, I feel I'm not part of it this year anybody. It's okay if it's temporary. I don't mind doing some research here. You know, uh, working here for 10 years, that's fine. But I think my heart's always been in Brunei. And, and we, were, we had a very interesting discussion about this yesterday. And I, I was very horrible. Sorry, Adrian. Okay. Uh, <laughs> to some people. But I, you know what? I'm so happy to listen to all the responses anyway. Okay? Uh, it gives me a lot of hope. And, and I think it really gives a lot of people uh, in Brunei a lot of hope. And uh, when, when, when you hear these people saying, what they're going to do to actually, you know, uh, move Brunei forward and stuff like that. So, so we hope we'll hear more of this later on. Uh, it will create a more stimulating work environment, more research funding than our competitors. Um, you know, when the other two universities were established, one of the clear guidelines was that each university is not supposed to compete with each other. We should synergize each other. Each other. Reality, okay. Yes, we will not compete in terms of off offerings of a smart group, but in terms of research and development, you know, there is some degree of competition, and I think that should be encouraged. That's important. Otherwise, people will get complacent. You know, uh, you you'll have this concept of monopoly, okay? Uh, so UBD sajaka, you know, or or UNISA sajaka, that sort of stuff. Yeah, and it's very unhealthy. Uh, of course, the last one, I have the last one, increased chance of having coffee or tea, you know, or with the very best. Uh, and uh, I think that's important. You know? uh, I hope whilst you're still here, you expand your, your, your wingspan, uh, your, your tentacles, whatever creature you are. Uh, and to look that, network with a lot of people. Do, do not be scared, do not be embarrassed about you know, uh, meeting people and even asking them, you know, can I join your research group or would you mind coming over to Bruna to help me set up so and so kind of smart that's the reason uh, why we are fairly progressive at the moment. We, our international networks is huge. Yeah? Uh, certainly our team is investing a lot 
uh, not just money, but time, uh, as far as networking is concerned. Okay. Ah, this is Aisha. This is my 13-year-old daughter. She, she just won a recent uh, writing competition. She came first in dressage. And ever since then, she's been trying to force me to go riding. I used to ride, but I gave it up about 12 years ago. And uh, <coughs> the reason I want to show you this is not because I want to show off. <coughs> but everything we do, there must be for a reason. Okay? Firstly, karena Allah SWT niyada, alilah ta'ala, inshaAllah. Other things would be more personal reason. Okay, then there's this institutional reason or, 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 or you know, societal reasons or whatever. Okay? Um, one of my reasons as well to try and move things is, is uh, because of my family. Okay, I've got five kids. She's the eldest, 13, uh, and then the youngest uh, is, uh, is, is Aliyah, another girl who's six. And then I've got three little monkeys in the middle. <laughs> I tell you, you know, I, I will not replace them for anything. I, I started having a family uh, when I was actually still uh, in the UK. I was, uh, I was, I was working as a, as a junior doctor and then went on to my specialist training. So we had two here, which was, which was quite nice. And, and things have moved on for us, you know. I, I was in the government for eight years, never thought I would leave until I shared this with some of the people here uh, yesterday, that one day I just felt that I'm not looking forward to coming in anymore, you know? I, I want to do something which is useful, but what is it? So, so then it struck me that I can still uh, I can contribute to, to the nation by being in the private sector. Because at the moment, the private sector, in terms of the sort of support that they have, you know? Some of them are very, very good. They don't have any problems. But the, you know, the up and coming SMEs, you know? So I thought I'll have, I'll have a go, and I tell you, it was well worth it. It was revealing, okay? Uh, and, and, and the sort of hardship you go through in the private sector is completely different to what you go through in the public sector. So I'm challenging you all, okay? No, I'm not saying to you, John Balik Brunei, Balik Brunei, but I'm challenging you all, okay? Don't just think about joining the government. Joining the government is very good, okay? But we, there is finite numbers to come in to join the government. But, but I challenge you to come out to the private sector. I'm still in there, by the way, okay? Uh, and I, I have a feed on both sides now. Uh, it, it's just that my appointment is slightly unique uh, because it's something that I never asked for, but when, when the opportunity arrived, it was like, wow, you know, this is uh, an opportunity for a, a turnaround project, uh, which inshallah, you know, with the team that I have now, uh, will be well, well worth it. Uh, so, so remember who's and who who you're doing it for. Okay. Ah, sad story. I, I don't know whether you guys seen this before. Huh? This is a statistics from UNESCO, and if you look, is there a pointer in this? Thing? No. There's no. That's okay. Don't worry. If you look up, just look at the, the, the second column where it says tertiary enrollment, uh, and I think I'm, I'm I'm pleased to hear that one of the presentation this morning is on this actually. If you look Malaysia right down to Brunei, uh, Malaysia is 28% enrollment to higher education, to university. If you look at Singapore, it's 65, Iceland is 70, and I believe uh, Sweden is not there, it's even higher. There's a, a lot of people who are highly educated, uh, who went to the tertiary level. But of course, uh, not every one of them will get a job, because you, there you have a very highly educated housewives and house husbands as well. That's politically correct then, <laughs> but look at Brunei, I mean, how can this be, you know, we're supposed to be a developed country, what are we doing about our, you know, our education, so we're working very hard at the moment, and I'm looking forward to you know, our, one of our colleagues on it to do his research on this, and if you look at the government you know, investment you know, in, in higher education, again, you know, Brunei is the lowest, uh, but I tell you what, good news, things are changing, okay, uh, and, and it's changing very rapidly, inshallah. Okay, uh, boring about science and technology again. Uh, I'm not saying science and technology is the only research that you can do. In fact, there are more sort of useful research that you can do away from SNT, but it's just so happened that this is the figures that I've got. Uh, if you look at the indicators for 2002 to 3, you'll see Brunei has come first again from the bottom, okay? Uh, and of course, unsurprisingly, Korea and Japan are up there. They're very high-tech countries. Uh, and, and, and in fact, if, if, you, if you read further about these people, uh, uh, the return from the investment uh, in R&D is 